All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. And today on the channel, we are revisiting some old videos. And today we're doing an updated version for 2020 on Luke Skywalker as a brand new hero guide. So basically I've gone back and updated my older ones. I've done all the new stats, everything that we can expect from his abilities, the best star cards that I use in Galactic Assault and in the hero modes, as well as the best maps to use him on in GA and HVV and some tips for both modes as well. So there's a whole bunch of content packed into this video, a lot of tips coming throughout, so make sure you guys watch it all the way to the end so that you don't miss any of them. With all of that said though, I am going to jump straight into the video, but if you guys enjoy this, make sure to leave a big thumbs up at the end and be sure to subscribe if you are new because I've gone into my analytics and had a look and apparently 60% of you guys that watch the videos aren't subscribed, so I would absolutely love it if some of you guys could subscribe and be regulars on the channel. So if you haven't done that yet, be sure to do so and if you want to hit that notification bell as well i would really really appreciate it anyways let's jump into all of the details starting off with luke's base health which is 750 and for a lightsaber hero this is kind of about the average health around about 750 is normally the mark 700 750 and then you've got your stronger heroes like vader that go up over 800 his health regen rate is 100 health per second so when you've taken damage he can regen that 100 health every single second with a max health regeneration of 200 the regen delay after taking damage is 2.7 seven seconds so you are going to have to wait that time until you can get health back so if you can keep that in the back of your mind when you are taking damage if you start to get low and you need to retreat just know that you've got pretty much three seconds until that health does start coming back in terms of run speed luke is the fastest hero in the game besides the droids his sprint speed is 8.6 meters per second and this is purely on foot no abilities no anything like that a lot of people think that darth maul is faster because of his spin ability but we're talking just running and i'm pretty sure the droids are actually faster but in terms of like humanoid characters, Luke is the fastest on foot. Moving into some of the damage numbers for Luke, his damage from in front of an enemy is 130 and 160 from behind. In terms of Luke's stamina, he can swing 10 times before running out. Although if you equip the Jedi Fighter Star card, he can swing up to 16 times. And we'll talk about that card a little bit later when we get to the Heroes vs. Villains section. Now, a lot of you guys probably already know this, but Luke has one of the fastest swing speeds in the game, coming in at 2.15 swings per second. And anyone that has come up against a swing spammy Luke player knows just how dangerous they can be if you let your block down just for a couple of seconds. They can wipe you out very quickly, so make sure you guys are aware of this both when you are playing Luke and also when you're playing against him. Now, just touching on Luke's stamina regen delay, when he does run completely out of stamina, he does have a one second delay before it does start to come back. Let's talk about Luke's abilities and the damage numbers with those. His first ability is of course Force Push, which does 150 damage to infantry and 90 damage to villains. So you can wipe out all infantry with a force push unless they are buffed up by an officer or they are the heavy class. 150 damage is really good and it's super satisfying to force push enemies and just watch them die instantly. But as for villains, 90 damage, so a little bit less, you're going to have to follow this up with some other attacks as well. His second ability in the middle is the repulse ability, which does 130 damage to troopers and 75 to villains. This ability is great as it comes with a full 360 area of effect, which also knocks down enemies. So if you feel like you are surrounded or you have enemies that are behind you, using this ability can get you out of trouble a lot of the time. His third ability is the rush attack and of course 100 damage to troopers and this one is the only of Luke's three abilities which does the same amount of damage to troopers as it does to villains. So 100 damage to both with the rush attack. Moving on from the damage numbers though, let's talk about the best Galactic Assault Star cards. Now keep in mind, these are the best cards that I personally find useful when I'm playing Galactic Assault. I'm sure if you go and watch a lot of other channels, they may recommend other cards because that's what they find best. These are the star cards that I find best, so try the loadout out yourself and see if you like it and let me know. The first card that I like to use is Intensify. This card gives you bonus damage with every trooper defeated or 200 damage to heroes, which gives you a max of 30. 36 extra damage. Now remember we did mention before with the Intensify Star Card you can do up to 166 damage in front and 196 damage from behind which is almost a one shot on a heavy trooper from the back. The second Star Card I like to use is Extended Push Reach which gives you a 30% increase to the area of effect of Luke's Force Push. I like using this card especially in Galactic Assault because there's a lot of times where you're out in the open and not having that Extended Force Push area of effect can get you into a little bit of trouble. Now I use this in a 
lot of situations, especially when there's a decent distance between me and an enemy and I have to run in a straight line towards them. Having this increased area of effect makes it much easier. It gives me less distance to close in before I can actually hit them with it and it helps me to take less damage by doing so. Now, the third star card I like to use for Galactic Assault is called Rush Immunity. Now, I don't see a lot of people using it, but it's personally one of the cards that I find best in Galactic Assault. This gives a 15% damage reduction for three seconds after using the Rush ability. Now, I like to use this as an escape tactic and also when I'm pushing large groups of enemies because I do get that extra 15% damage reduction. Now, for example, if I start to take damage from enemies and I'm trying to retreat, using a quick rush, then dashing side to side and then using a rush again is going to give me a decent amount of time with extra damage reduction. So if those enemies do manage to hit me, I'm going to take less damage overall, especially when I'm running really low on health. It can be super helpful. Not only can it do this, but also when pushing groups of enemies, when you use like a rush to a repulse combination, this can be also helpful getting that damage reduction if you're being shot from all sides, just in case your repulse doesn't actually reach one of the enemies that are around you. Now, flipping the script, let's talk about the best star cards that I find for heroes versus villains. Again, this is my personal opinion. It might be different for you, but test them out and see how you go. The first card is again, intensify for that bonus damage. I don't need to explain that one again to you guys. The second card I like to use is called Jedi Fighter. Now this star card drains 35% less stamina when attacking or deflecting blaster fire. I think having more stamina in the hero modes is crucial. I think it's really important to be able to attack longer, block longer, do all of those things because a lot of the time you are going to be in saber duels where you have someone that's blocking for a long time, especially if you're going up against someone like a Darth Vader, they are going to be blocking for long periods of time. So you need to be able to have that stamina so that when you're dashing around them, trying to get behind them and you're using multiple swings at a time, this is just going to last that much longer when you're attacking and vice versa on the other side when you need to block for a long period of time. The third star card, I usually alternate between two different cards. I'll either use the extended push reach, which is what I was originally using in Galactic Assault as well, and then the Epicenter star card. Now, Epicenter gives 40 bonus damage within half of its radius to enemies. I like to use the rush attack with a repulse combination because the rush can get me behind the enemy and then I'm still close enough to get the 40 bonus damage when I use the repulse. In saying this though, there is another loadout that you can use, which is Intensify, Extended Push Reach, and then the Stronger Push card, which gives you further knockback effects. I tend to use that loadout when you're on a map that can push enemy heroes off the edge. Things like Kamino or the Capital Ship Interior, those maps are really good for doing this because you can actually launch them off the edge and get easy kills. So sometimes having a stronger force push is really good in that situation. So sometimes that is a loadout that I will use as well. In terms of the best maps in Galactic Assault to use Luke on, I find that Endor, Kashyyyk and Takodana are my favorite three maps to use him on. Endor is just such a long map and the final phase is just a field day for Luke. A lot of you guys will be watching the gameplay in the background, which is where I got my highest kill streak with Luke, which was 93 kills and it was on Endor. So there's a lot of opportunity on that map for you to do well with him just because it is so long and there are a lot of great places where Luke can be successful. Kashyyyk as well, being one of the longer maps and having the trees to hide in behind, this can be great. You are of course on the defending side though, so you will have to play a little bit more passively as opposed to Endor. And then Takodana, again, it's a defending map. However, the first phase is really a good way to rack up kills. I've personally gotten 35 to 40 kills in the first phase multiple times. And then unfortunately the rounds have ended. So you can imagine if that does go on to the next couple of phases, how much potential Luke has on those maps. So those are the three that I find best. There definitely are other maps that he is great on, but these are just the three that I prefer using him on the most. In terms of HVV maps, the capital ship interior, like I mentioned before, Kashyyyk, Kamino, and any maps where you can push off ledges, Luke is always going to be a huge advantage for you, but he can be very effective on those maps that aren't as well. But I will talk about some tips for HVV in just a minute. Now, moving into the last section for this guide, I'm gonna talk about tips for both Galactic Assault and Heroes vs. Villains. And what I've put down is just five tips for each mode and they're kind of simple but some may help some of the newer players some may even help some experienced players that haven't realized these things before so in terms of galactic assault the first tip that i like to use is a combination attack which is a regular lightsaber swing with a rush combination so a regular lightsaber swing and then a rush combination can wipe out all infantry including heavies and buffed officers in this case it's one that's really good to take out an enemy quickly and also keep yourself on the move so that if someone else does see you performing an attack on an enemy 
you're still moving so you can get out of the way and it makes it harder for them to aim at you. The second tip I want to talk about is a rush to repulse combo. This one's great when there's multiple enemies grouped up near each other. Using a rush can damage some of the enemies around and then a repulse again gives you that 360 area of effect which is going to finish off anyone that you've hit with that rush ability and also knock down anyone that you might not have hit with the rush ability. So it's a good all around combination to use when there are groups of enemies. The third tip I'm going to give you for Luke is when using the force push ability, jump before you use it. Not only does this make for easy follow up attacks, it also gives gives you a better chance of the ability registering when hitting an enemy. Sometimes when you use the force push ability, little bumps in the map or different heights of the ground and things can affect the performance of Luke's force push, sometimes allowing it to not register. So it's definitely an advantage to use a jump and then force push down on enemies, giving you a better angle of attack. The fourth tip that I'm going to give you guys is to play around objective points as teams will run towards that and it makes for really easy kills. In terms of Endor, for example, running towards the objective points where the ion cannon are spawning in. This makes for a great spot to kill enemies because they are going to be running towards that so they can shoot it at the ATAT -AT in the second phase. So keeping around this area, you know there's going to be enemies coming around. And the final tip for Galactic Assault is to avoid enemy heroes whenever possible unless you catch them off guard. Now, obviously going one-on-one -on -one against an enemy hero isn't smart by any means, especially if it's someone like Darth Vader or General Grievous, even Emperor Palpatine who has very quick melting potential when they're going up against Luke. So if you can avoid enemy heroes, heroes if you're going for kill streaks and that's the goal that you're trying to get out of this then you should do so unless you catch them off guard like i said of course and you come up behind them sometimes you can get a couple of sneaky hits and build up that damage to stack the intensified damage that you're going to get in the future this is a good way to do it and if you do see blaster heroes as enemies feel free to attack them they don't usually pose much threat except for like Aiden. if she has a stun ready and she catches you with that she can be very melty but in terms of the other blaster heroes you're usually pretty safe just keep an ear out for bosk's mines and watch out for Phasma's turret and you should be okay. So these are all the tips that I have for Galactic Assault. Let's talk about the tips for heroes versus villains. The first tip might seem simple, but it's to keep yourself alive as long as possible and chip away at enemies in order to build up your intensify damage. Once the intensify star card is fully loaded up to your max damage potential, Luke is going to take out enemy heroes much easier. So staying alive for longer is going to be a huge advantage. And if you die, this actually resets. So you're going to have to build up that damage all over again just to get the bonus out put of damage that you would have if you were to stay alive longer and do more damage to heroes so keep yourself alive tip number two is the jedi fighter card will give you the stamina advantage in long drawn out saber duels now this one is more sort of for hero showdown when you end up in like a 1v1 or a 1v2 situation having jedi fighter as a star card and having that extra stamina pool is going to be a big help for you if you do have to take multiple swings or multiple blocks within a saber duel so as long as you can swing and block longer than your opponent nine times out of ten you are going to to win that fight so make sure you use the jedi fighter card and use it to your advantage Tip number three is, like I mentioned before, the rush to repulse combo. This is great for getting behind enemy villains and knocking them down, and it's really good against block spammers. So for example, if you have someone like Darth Vader in front of you and they like to hold that block up for as long as possible, using a rush and then a quick repulse as soon as you get behind them is great to knock them off their feet, which may open up the opportunity for your teammates to fire upon him while he's on the ground. So this is another good one if you are coming up against a block spammer. The fourth tip for heroes vs villains is to force push to jump swing which can catch an enemy off guard as they're standing up now what i mean by this is if you're running at an enemy and you jump to force push them it's going to carry you further forward so while you're traveling further forward use that momentum to then run towards the enemy jump up in the air slightly and swing your lightsaber and attack sometimes this can catch the enemy off guard and it gives you a slight second where they are standing up off the ground but they haven't got their block ready and there's a small gap where you can actually get a hit in on them so if you know an enemy's weak and you force push them and catch them with it run towards them, jump up in the air and swing your lightsaber at them. Sometimes you'll catch them, it just takes really good timing. And the fifth and final tip, which is again a pretty general one for heroes vs villains and hero showdown, play around your teammates. Don't go rogue, don't try and be the hero, don't run into the full enemy squad and die. This isn't going to help your team at all. Make sure you stay around them, play together and you are going to win a lot more fights. So guys, that is everything I have for this Luke Skywalker hero guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you got a few useful 
couple of tips out of it. Some of you more experienced players probably know most of the tips that I have given out, but some of you new players might not have, so I hope it did help you anyway. But with all of that said, that brings this video to the end and I am going to get out of here. But before I do, I would appreciate it if you do leave a big thumbs up like I mentioned at the start. It really helps out the channel and if you could drop a comment down below as well, I would really appreciate that too. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here now. Thank you all for tuning in today. I will see you in the next video and may the force be with you always. Let's shift.